Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for joining us here today for your word for the day. I hope that you are going to be joining us this Easter weekend. Uh, this coming weekend, we'll have uh, multiple services for you to choose from as we worship the good news of our risen Savior. So I encourage you to join us here at Sweetwater uh, Saturday at 3.30 or 5 o'clock, Sunday at 9.30 or 11. If you're in Parker, 11 o'clock at uh, Western Park. Uh, we'll be out there uh, celebrating Easter uh, outdoors at 11 o'clock. Uh, or if you're our, part of our classic service crew, 8 a.m. at our McCulloch service, uh, campus in Lake Havasu. We'd love to have you joining us for Easter. Uh, and, and Easter is the theme of our week. All this week, we're going through the events that lead up to the, the great news that Jesus rose from the grave. But, but we want to step back and say, how did we get to that point? What were the events? Just, just some reminders for us uh, of what took place that week so long ago. Uh, and yesterday you heard Pastor Mitch share the, the passage where uh, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to the Father. He's asking hey, if there's any way that this could not happen, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done is the prayer of Jesus in that. Uh, and the, the next passage in Matthew 26 goes immediately from Jesus. They're talking with the disciples about him urging them to pray and join him in praying. And he sees Judas coming. And Jesus was aware that Judas would be coming with religious leaders and that, that Judas was coming to betray him. And the next few moments in Matthew 26 are kind of chaotic and crazy because Judas approaches Jesus and gives him a kiss and says, hey, uh, as an indication to the people that he had brought with him, that, hey, this is Jesus. This is the one that, that you're to arrest uh, and, and hopefully uh, get to the point of crucifixion. Uh, but the disciples are there. And a really interesting thing happens in the midst of that is um, as Jesus is interacting with Judas, uh, he says, friend, do what you came to do in verse 50 of Matthew 26. And they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him to arrest him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Now, later in the Gospels, we learn that that was the apostle Peter. And what's so interesting about this is they, they were so willing to fight for Jesus. Just moments before in that evening, uh, Peter had professed his, his devotion to Jesus. He had, de he had said, hey, Jesus, I will die for you. And here he's willing to potentially kill for Jesus. And I want us, as we think about what it means to follow Jesus, to think about some of the dynamics there. And later as we look at, at Peter's story, you'll hear tomorrow about, uh, about what happens in the coming moments and hours uh, of Peter's interaction in this story. But I want to think about the dynamic there, that, that Peter was saying, hey, Jesus, I'm willing to die for you. But in that moment of him being under pressure, him seeing his, his master, his Lord, his leader being arrested, he didn't get in line to be arrested with Jesus. Instead, he took up the sword to fight, to push back, to, to hopefully take matters into his own hands and push back with violence. And see, I heard a quote recently that says, there's a version of Christianity that is willing to kill for Jesus, but not willing to die for Jesus. And I think that's what we see in the, the moment of, of Peter's interaction there uh, in the garden as Jesus is being betrayed and arrested. And here's how that connects with us. There are times where we're willing to say, hey, God, I'm going to do anything for you. I'm going to get violent. I'm going to, I'm going to push the, the, the limits of, of what we can do. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. I'm going to you know, storm the gates of hell for you. But when a moment comes for us to sacrifice, for us to suffer, for us to die to self, we push away from that. We push against that. We say, no, I don't really want to do that. But yet Jesus perfectly modeled what it meant to follow the Father's will and direction for his life. He had every opportunity and ability to, to push back against the betrayal and arrest. Every opportunity, as he says here in Matthew 26, to summon legions of angels to defend himself. And instead, he surrendered. He surrendered to the Father. He surrendered to the Father's will for his life. And he gave up freedom. He gave up comfort. He gave up free will. He eventually gave up his life. And he did that as a model for us, that what it means to follow Jesus is to, to give up what we want in exchange for what the Father wants for us, 
to give up our comfort, to give up our priorities, to give up uh, our, our direction for life, to give up potentially our well-being, our, our status, uh, and, and whatever it means to sacrifice so that we can follow Jesus and be obedient to him. So I want you today, as we approach Easter, to be thinking about that, to be thinking about, you know, are, are you not just willing to kill for Jesus, but are you willing to die for him? Are you willing to sacrifice anything in life to be more obedient and to be more faithful to following Jesus? Because that's what he modeled for us, giving up everything to, to follow the will of the Father, but also giving up everything so that we might be saved and forgiven. And he did that as an example for us. So I hope that this week you would take on that spirit, that you would take on the, the mindset of sacrifice and surrender so that you can draw closer to God. Hope that you have a great day, Calvary, and we hope we see you this weekend for Easter uh, here at one of our services or online at any of those service times as well. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.